Okay, today is July the 14th. I'm, my name is Tanya Pincham. I'm with Oklahoma State University. This is the, the Project Women of the Oklahoma Legislature. And today I'm talking with Patricia Dennis regarding her great grandmother, Mrs. Lamar Looney, who served, who was the very first woman to serve in the Oklahoma Senate from 1920 through 1928. She was there four terms. So thank you for joining me today. And let's just start, I know this is several generations back, so we kind of need to, to figure out how you are related to her, just the uh, family tree, so to speak. Uh, my great grandmother died before I was born, and so I know nothing firsthand, but uh, she was born in Talladega, Alabama in 1871, and the family moved to Texas. I'm sure it was Reconstruction that helped that along. And she married a man whose family was quite prominent in Texas, uh, Doc Turney Looney. The two of them married and moved to southeastern Oklahoma. Uh, Greer County was originally part of Texas and later became Oklahoma and I don't know exactly when the change occurred. They had six children, one died in infancy, and when the oldest boy was 10, um, she lost her husband. He had been the postmaster, I believe, of Hollis, which was the town that they lived in, and uh, she succeeded to his job, and the United States government was giving land allotments. The requirements were that you had to move to the land itself and live on it for five years. And then they would issue you a patent and the land was yours at that point. So she moved out there with her five children. They dug sod bricks and they made one of the little huts that they called soddies that uh, had sawed on the roof. They were partly underground. The side walls were made of planks. And I think there were planks on the floor, but I couldn't be sure. They sold her organ, which was how she had uh, gotten money besides her postmistress job, by teaching the local children uh, organ lessons. And she bought two mules in order to put in the crop. When the first crop came in, she bought another organ and bought uh, two um, little cabins that she put together to make a house with a little breezeway in the middle. And um, she lived on the land with the children as her only helpers and the mules for five years. After that, she sold the mules, moved back to town so the children could have a better education, and became county clerk of, uh, I think it was Harmon County, it could have been Greer, I'm not sure which, because it, it had split into two counties at that point. Uh, she was in county offices for several years, and then when her children got a bit older, and women's suffrage was on the horizon, some of her friends got together and said, you would make a fine senator for the state of Oklahoma. So she apparently bought a car and was driving it around in 1918, 1919. And with her children in tow and was going door to door and, and to meetings, uh, trying to uh, elicit votes for her Senate race, which she won. In 1920, she was seated and she won four terms in the Senate before heart disease shut her career down. She was uh, 
I think you call her a populist at this point. She was for universal suffrage. She was for taking care of the elderly, taking care of children. Uh, she was fiercely honest. And uh, she had a lot of causes that are still issues in today's campaign that uh, she really fiercely believed in. She had a, a very keen steel trap kind of mind. And the other legislators never had to give way because she became uh, oh poor little feminine me. She wasn't that way. She was strong. She knew what she believed in. Everyone trusted her. And since she was so scrupulously honest and so above board in her dealings with everyone, she was universally admired. She was quite uh, active also in uh, different organizations, uh, charitable organizations, Woodman of the World, um, you name it, if it was a good cause, she was a member of it. She wanted to be lieutenant governor, and the state constitution forbid women at that time to hold any office except state uh, secretary of uh, charities and corrections, I believe is the term. And she didn't want to do that. She wanted to be lieutenant governor. And she had quite a few people who were supporting her candidacy for lieutenant governor. However, she realized that the law said that she couldn't until there was a constitutional amendment passed in order to allow that. So she decided to run for the United States Senate. She was running against a very firmly entrenched Democratic uh, Senator uh, Gore from Eastern Oklahoma. He was blind and he was very um, heavily into Democratic politics and he ran and won several terms for the United States Senate. He was kind of the perennial Senator Gore. And of course she lost, but she made a good showing. And uh, after that, she devoted herself to other charitable and uh, political causes and generally something that would do good for the population. When she died in 1935, her casket was put in the rotunda of the state capitol building, mm -hmm. and the flag flew at half-mast during this time. We're all very, very proud of her. She had five children? Yes. Yeah. Okay, and do you know what happened to each one of those five, just generally? Well, generally the oldest one was in business here in Oklahoma City. Mm -hmm. Another one was in forest conservation in Colorado. Um, another one was a secretary and General Girl Friday uh, in Chicago for a long time, and she married uh, and moved to California. Uh, my mother was always a homemaker. She married a man who had just completed law school and uh, was uh, working for the state as a um, surveyor building roads all over the state because in the depression it was very hard to get a job of any kind and if you found a job you just did whatever it was um and her youngest child mabel 
was a very well-known school teacher in the Oklahoma City School District. She had gone to Columbia University for her degree, and she went when she was quite young, so that she came back to Oklahoma City and taught at Webster uh, Junior High School, or high school, I'm not sure which, when she was only 19 years old. She went on to become the head of the English department at Classen High School, which was the main high school in Oklahoma City, and later Northwest Classen until she retired. None of them went into politics, huh? <laughs> no. That she went, you could tell a little bit about when she she became a law, lawyer. Oh, yes. Her father was a lawyer, and she liked to read law from her father's books. And at that time, you could read law under the direction of some attorney and sit for the bar, which she did. And she became a member of the Oklahoma Bar Association um, while she was in the Senate. I, I have her uh, her certificate from the uh, Oklahoma Supreme Court hanging in my home. I'm take a picture of that. Reading a little bit of background on her, she had some some trying moments when she first moved in. Nicole hurt his hand and miss, missing a finger. We're going to this. Oh, yes, yes. Some interesting. Uh, trials, I suppose, when she first moved to Oklahoma. Well, pioneer life was pretty hard. And uh, one of her children was sitting on the fence at their farm one day, and he fell off and fell into the hog pen. And a hog bit off two of his fingers. And she dashed into the hog pen, grabbed the fingers, washed them off, wrapped them in a cool towel, hitched up the buggy and took him to the hospital. They reattached his fingers and he was able to use them all the rest of his life. Another time the, the boys were hoeing the vegetable garden, which they needed for their subsistence. And a rattlesnake appeared and, and coiled up looking at one of the children. And she was in the house wearing some cloth bedroom slippers. She came out when he yelled and killed the snake with that cloth bedroom slipper. We still don't know how she did it. And let's move forward a little bit since we pretty much all you can tell us about that time period. When they decided to do the portrait for the Capitol, you want to talk a little bit about that? Well, I didn't find out about it until the portrait was almost done, and my mother found out about it from me. So uh, we came down to the Capitol and added all the input we pro possibly could. Um, at the unveiling of the portrait, my family was there, and my mother was so proud. Um, I addressed the Senate and told them a little bit about my great-grandmother, and then they had a reception afterward and took lots of pictures with all the women legislators at this at that particular point. This was April 19th. Uh, my, my 2005. <laughs> Uh, which was the 10th anniversary of the Murrah building bombing. And had, had you been to the Capitol before that occasion? Oh, many times. I used to visit my friends there all the time and use the Capitol Library for uh, research yeah. because I'm a lawyer and it was a handy library to use. Have you been back since to see, see it actually hanging? Several times. Okay. Uh, a couple of years ago, we, um, Canterbury Choral Society, in which I sing, did uh, a num uh, I call it a number, it's a song, that was commissioned for the um, 
state centennial, and we performed it for the people at the Capitol. And I saw it then, and I've seen it on three or four other occasions. And I go back and visit her from time to time. Um, she needs to keep tabs on us. <laughs> <laughs> I visited her today, actually, before I came over here. <laughs> back to, to uh, back to have known her. In the portrait, she looks like she is looking at you and studying you, doesn't she? She does, yeah. It's like, yeah, she didn't mix words, I wouldn't think, and she knew what she wanted to do, and no bones about it. And she did it. <laughs> and she did it. Well, if you don't have anything else, I, I thank you very much for sharing what you do have. Well, you're quite welcome. I'm very happy to know that she will be included in this historical project. Thank you.